Babin Rowers back at Ewood Park this weekend when they take on Northampton Town in the league. Win that game and we'll be just two points off the top spot. That's right folks, back once again, this time picking apart the next cup final, Blackburn Rovers up against Northampton Town. But before I get into the thick of things, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. That's right, folks. The next cup final, that's Tony Mowbray's words. Each and every game from here on in is a cup final. And we've won the past two. Can we make it three wins on the bounce at Ewood Park up against Northampton Town? Now, before... I carry on a little bit. It is also FA Cup weekend and the leaders, Wigan, I believe, are in cup action. So that is why we could close the gap to just two points if we pick up three right here at Ewood Park. So take a close look at the match itself. It will take place at Ewood Park on Saturday 27th of January 2018. And last season, Northampton finished 16th place. They are currently... 18th, so in and around about the spot they're likely to finish. Uh, and the top goal scorer, bit of bit of extra incentive here for Blackburn Rovers. Chris Long, who is on loan from Burnley, he's got eight goals. And the man pulling the strings, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank, and Northampton Town are on a bit of a, ru a run at the minute. I think they've won the past three games. So but we'll take a look at their form in a little bit. As for the records between the two teams, they played 11 games, six wins for Rovers, three losses and two draws. The most recent draw was just a couple of weeks ago over the Christmas break, uh, when it was a, I think it was a 1-1 draw against Northampton at their place. Uh, and the less said about Antonison's penalty, the better. Meanwhile, over the years, the last five appearances at Ewood Park between these two sides are like this. Uh, so out of the past five, Blackburn Rovers won four, and some heavy, heavy numbers in there. A 6-1 win, and that was all the way back in, where is it now? 1965, 11th of December, 1965. Rovers 6-1 win, and that was in the old League Division 1. But last time out, it was only a 1-0 win for Rovers, and that was in the League Cup back in 1974. You have to go back all the way to 21st of September, 1965, for the last time Northampton Town beat Rovers, and that was in the League Cup also. I feel Rovers will start. Ryer in goal, Naimbi, Downing, Mulgrew, Williams, Bradley Dack, Richard Smallwood, Elliot Bennett, Craig Conway across the midfield, Danny Graham and Dominic Samuel from the bench. And so that would mean the likes of Amari Bell, uh, Jack Payne and Adam Armstrong on the bench. Some exciting prospects there. It could be an opportunity to play Bell, but I think... Why change a winning system at the moment? Uh, meanwhile, let's take a look at the statistics. Top of the pops, Bradley Dak with 12 goals uh, thus far for the season. A lot of transfer mumblings and grumblings going on right now. But as far as I under understand, he ain't going nowhere unless there's some huge offer comes in from either a Premiership Club or a high-end Championship Club. But to be honest with you, I don't think it's going to happen. I think he's enjoying his football at Rovers. And I think... If he can stick, keep, keep his nose to the ground and uh, do what he's been doing, he'll be playing championship football with Rovers next season. Uh, moving forward, next on the goal scorers charts, I always get a giggle out of this. Charlie Mulgrew with 11 goals, second top goal scorer. How balmy is that? And he's from playing from centre back. Danny Graham with nine goals, and Dominic Samuels there with eight into the discipline. Small's got nine yards, Bennett's got six, Williams got six, and Corey Evans has got five. Uh, into the Reds now. Obviously, don't like this column whatsoever. Any Ben's got two, Sam's got one, Warren's got one, Harper's got one. Let's take a look at the form book for Rovers going into this match. Of the last five games, we've won two out of the last five. Uh, we've lost one out of the last five, which was the uh, FA Cup match. But let's, let's take a look at them one by one. Last time out, we took on Fleetwood at their place and won 2 1. Gritty affair, but we got the job done. Before that, 30th of January, 3 1 win over. Promotion challenges Shrewsbury Town. As I said uh, uh, just a second ago, last defeat for over 6th of January, 1-0 uh, loss in the FA Cup. And before that, it was a 1-1 draw against Rotherham on the road. That was uh, on New Year's Day. And way back Saturday, 30th of December, Blackburn Rovers 2-2 draw against Scumthorpe. Some, uh, there are some impressive results there. I know, you know the draws don't look good on paper, or the point doesn't really look good for the table. But Rotherham, they were on fire at the, at, at the time. They're still knocking on the door of the playoffs at the moment. Scunthorpe, they're going to be one of the battlers come, come towards the end of the season for the top two or three spots. 
Uh, and Shrewsbury, obviously, they were on fire and they were dominating the, the, the table early doors. So there's some big results there and it's, uh, it's key for where we are right now. And Fleetwood ain't no pushovers despite their league position. Anyway, as for our visitors, Northampton, this is how I feel they will line up come Saturday. O'Donnell and Goal, Facey, Taylor, Turnbull, Bunny, Crooks, Grimes, Hoskin, O'Toole, Foley, and Long, let's take a look at their statistics. Long is top of the charts with eight goals for the season. O'Toole's in second with just three goals. Revels there with three. And Taylor's also got three. Into the yellows, ex Rover Matt Grimes tops the tar charts with nine yellows. Crooks has got seven. O'Toole's got four. McWilliams has got four. Into the reds, Crooks has got two. Revel and Barnett both have one. So let's take a look at the last five results for Northampton Town. Last time out, they took off fellow strugglers. Milton Keynes, Don, Don's and picked up a 2-1 victory before that on the 30th of January they beat playoff chasers Bradford City 2-1 at their gaff before that they picked up another three points uh, on January the 6th but the 3-1 impressive uh, home victory over Southend South United probably cost Phil Brown his job um, meanwhile all the way back on the 1st of January New Year's Day they took on leaders Wigan but they only stumbled to a 1-0 home defeat and all the way back on the 30th of December they lost to Portsmouth uh, away from home. Let's take a look at some of the other fixtures that could affect the top end of the table and also the relegation spots. Obviously Wigan, Oxford postponed FA Cup uh, duties for Wigan. Uh, as for Shrewsbury, they got a tricky away match up against Portsmouth. So that could be telling. Maybe, just maybe, we can open up a little bit of a gap uh, between second and third. Meanwhile, Bradford City host AFC Wimbledon. And who else is in the mix? Scunthorpe United. Where are they at? They take on South and United. Well, you've heard what I've had to say. What's been happening on social media? Well, to be honest with me, absolutely nothing. So today, we're going to take a look at some of the comments from the BRFCS forum. And if you haven't gone to the forum, now's a great opportunity to do so. It's a great opportunity for you guys to chat with fellow Rovers from around the globe and down the road. Let's take a look at some of the comments. FGS5635 posted this. We're going to play their cup game Saturday, so have no league game. Real chance to close the gap and put a bit more pressure on them. It's been a bit of a struggle at home this season at times. Hopefully the last home game is a sign of things changing and we can kick on. Meanwhile, B, uh, Ben H. Ben said this, I would play the new lads in an attacking pacey team. I can't see the need for a cautious lineup as they will likely sit deep and stay compact. A fast start, an early goal, could make it a relatively straightforward afternoon. The more we let them play, the more likely they'll grow in confidence. With all, with, with our front four all wanted to play fairly narrow, it's key our fullbacks overlap, similar to how Spurs play. Though we're nowhere near as good, obviously. Uh, and his lineup is like this, obviously completely different to mine. Raya, Naimbi, Dowling, Mulgrew and Bell. Smallwood, Bennett. Payne, Dak, Armstrong, and Graham. It's a, it's a tasty looking lineup, um, but that's throwing all your eggs in one basket or throwing all your all your aces on the table straight off. I like to have something in reserve to, to change it up. So there's no point um, being a bit too too over overzealous in my eyes. So I'd be a little bit more cautious and, and keep maybe Armstrong, uh, Armstrong and Payne at the back and definitely um, uh, save Amari Bell because Williams is, hasn't really put a foot wrong. Okay, he's, he's been overworked and overplayed. Yes, it might be good for him to get a break. And there is no real options, unlike in Naimbi, where a Caddis can easily come in and, and give him a break for a, a game or two. So it could be an opportunity for Bell to come in and make his debut, but I don't think so. I think I think that that game is, is further down the road. Maybe the Warsaw game uh, on Tuesday, because those it's it, they are so close together so we could see a good rotated squad between this this Northampton game and the Warsaw game anyway next comment uh, Phil Phil IPL said Northampton on a bit of a good run we're on a bit of a better run we can beat ourselves but Northampton can't having said that it won't be a walkover if you follow that you're better than I am uh, meanwhile 1864 Rover Wright said by the time we can play a league game we could be a point in front of them so here's hoping the draw with West Ham FC and we scuttle Northampton and Warsaw. Pressure is on. That is a very, very good point, which I nearly overlooked. Uh, we do play two games before they even play an next league game. So we technically could go top of the pops um, this time next week, which will be Wednesday the something. 
Uh, anyhow, uh, Colt Savers said, uh, Mowbray won't start Bell this weekend. Williams was the player of last season and ever-present this year. Moby isn't that ruthless. However, if Bell does have the pace, then he needs bringing in sooner rather than later. We have been too slow and static all season. Mowbray's recent signings show that he identifies this as a problem that needs rectifying. Williams is just a bog standard fullback and Bell could make a huge difference if he can live up to his promise. Uh, good point, but like I said, I'm with you. Bell ain't going to start this weekend. He might start against Walsall. Big Dog Steel said, I reckon it's only a matter of time before we put someone to the sword big time. And hopefully it's this Saturday. Early goal key. I completely agree. If we can if we can get our guns blazing from the get-go, maybe a goal within the first five minutes, it could be a rout. Over the years, a number of players have played for both Blackburn Rovers and Northampton Town. Here are a bonus Four of them. John Curtis, who remembers this defender from the uh, late 90s, perhaps. Um, and the Roy Hodgson era, I think. Uh, never really met. Uh, he, he joined us from Man United, but didn't really amount to much. Ended up being a bit of a journeyman, playing for a whole host of clubs um, around the place. Uh, as for that, a fellow defender joins him. Andy Todd, former captain of Rovers. Former Charlton player also. He also represented Northampton Town. And is everybody's favourite keeper, Jason Steele. Is also a Northampton Town player. Now playing his football at the bottom of the championship. If he's still getting a game for Sunderland. Then we have Lee Williamson. Uh, former Blackburn Rovers and a former Northampton Town. Also a fellow relegation scrapper right now with Burton Albion. Now you've heard what I've had to say. And you've heard what some of the fans have had to say. But that none of that really matters. What? really matters is what Caster Cat thinks will happen this weekend against Northampton Town. Let's take a sneak peek. That's all I've got for you today, folks. It's going to be a mad few days for Rovers. Uh, first and foremost, taking on Northampton, and then shortly after, we've got a game against Walsall. Hopefully, like that comment was just a couple of minutes ago, uh, could be the case that we could go top. Ah, it's crazy force, and it's it's well overdue. Uh, I thought we would have topped the table at least once this season, but um, we did have a slow start, and maybe, just maybe, the writing's on the wall that we can finally put some more pressure. Obviously, us going top, for that momentum, for that for that minute or that couple of days, you know, it, it just it just makes Wigan have to step it up a little bit, you know. That's all it will do. But anyway, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's 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 pull on the brakes a second. First and foremost, we've got to beat Northampton Town before we can even think about Walsall. So Northampton are unbeaten in three games. Ain't going to be a walkover. They've shown a, a real true grit at the moment trying to get themselves out of that relegation scrap and try and survive in this division for another season. Jimmy Floyd has done. Done, have done the wonders so far since taking over from Justin Edinburgh. They did a number on us at their place. Obviously, Antonison's penalty gaff still lingers in the back of my mind. But hopefully, we won't have any of that kind of drama at Ewood this weekend. And maybe, just maybe, we can get a nice, comfortable win and build up to a big action next week. Anyway, enough jibber-jabber from me. Until next time, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you back out to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Until next time... Thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll get you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.